dramatic story of Australian radio star Doug Mulray and the night the line between the real and the supernatural blurred. She sort of turned as she moved across the room, but just for one or two seconds was there before my eyes and then gone. I'd never met Doug Mulray before. Like most of you, I knew him as a wild and crazy radio voice and the host of that controversial naughtiest home video TV show. You may be familiar with the Doug I'm talking about. Warning, this is an adults only program. Not, I repeat, not Australia's funniest home video show. Certain scenes and language may offend some wussy girl's blouse and nancy boy viewers. But the Doug Mulray we're about to meet is an entirely different one. The story he's going to tell is dramatically different. And at first, he didn't want to tell it. I'm loath to do it because clearly when one discusses the supernatural, the paranormal, one attracts criticism, cynicism, loses friends. But it is a compelling story and it's something which actually happened to me and in part to a good many other people who still have their wits about them. With our reassurance that we'd take his story seriously, Doug agreed to share with us his personal account of the dramatic events of a Black Friday in 1976. That night, Doug Mulray was a young radio announcer with Radio 2GO on the New South Wales Central Coast. Throughout this story, you will hear actual recordings from that night. When Black Friday comes, well, it's arrived, and in a big way. We're broadcasting live from the Inn of the Damned at 2GO on a Friday night. Black Friday. I'm Mark Smith here. 13 minutes after 7, here's Doug Mulray. The event started to change shape when Romy Warren, the medium we'd invited to participate, started to do some shtick. I think we all became concerned, if not alarmed, I remember Bob Byrne was certainly alarmed when Romy Warren did a thing that she described as transfiguration, if my memory serves me well, where she stood against a door in this candlelit room while we were playing one of our tunes and made, believe it or not, her entire face disappear, become a, a, a disc of light. There was a, a hairline and there was a shoulder line, but there was no, no face there to speak of at all. And, and as soon as you realised that she somehow, remarkably, caused her face to evaporate from the space that you had recognised as her face moments before, uh, a, a suit was superimposed a Chinaman. I, I, I can remember this as if it were yesterday. And I'm sure the other guys would corroborate this. And, and I want you, Bob, to come over here and tell us what you saw. I saw a Chinaman's face, and I said to, to uh, Doug, without any prompting, I said, a Chinaman, uh, I, I can see a Chinese. But I must admit that I was kind of spooked by the whole thing. There was the face of an ancient Chinaman where her face had been a second before. The Chinese face disappeared. It was replaced by a stream of faces that came and went so quickly that the impression one got was that her face was in some way plastic. It leapt around. At one stage, I remember this distinctly too, there was the face of a huge Indian, American Indian, that eclipsed even her hairline and she appeared to, to grow. A whole body appeared to take on the size of this remarkable Indian man, whoever, whatever he or it was. I was at this point <laughs> fairly convinced that we were into something considerably larger than we'd originally envisaged. We, we had tea, we had coffee. I mean, we took a little bit of settling after that experience and then moved into that section of the program we designed, which was the walk outside and upstairs to the upper room where according to the information we had from Terry Burke and those people who looked for us into Gosford Court records, a woman had been murdered and subsequently appeared to her uh, long uh, vanished husband, the supposed murderer, uh, to appear to him 
on his second visit to the house and, and, and frightened him to death. That was the legend that surrounded the house. When we designed the broadcast, I thought it would be a cute trick. After having had the experiences downstairs with Romy Warren, the aforementioned experiences, I began to wonder about what we would see. We'll find out what happened in just a minute. TV personality Doug Mulray with more on the night the line between reality and the supernatural blurred. We went up the stairs with a long lead, the two of us. Uh, as I say, an outside staircase. Uh, the upper room was accessed from an outside staircase. And we got to the top of the stairs and opened the door and you could see across the water the moonlight through the broken glass pane. And we stood and we waited. I remember noticing an appreciable drop in the ambient temperature of the room. I'd read enough about ghosts and, and sightings of ghosts to know that this was one of the things people spoke about, I commented on it. I said that maybe we did have some kind of presence here. Romy said definitely. She told me that it was a woman, as I remember, and that if we were just silent for a while, we may be able to see her. I can feel a presence. What sort of a presence do you feel? Perhaps the talking interrupted. The talking interrupted at all? Yes, can we have just a second's quiet? Just a moment. The automatic gain control, that device at radio stations which picks up whatever noise there is to keep it balanced, to keep something on the radio, sucked up the sound of the insects outside. And I can remember to this day the, the intense sound of the, the chirruping, the, the grasshoppers, the cicadas, whatever they were in the bush, loud, hammering, the coal in the room, but nothing, nothing did we see. So after what seemed like an eternity, it was probably 10 or or 12 seconds, I, I said, well, it looks like uh, we're going to be disappointed this evening. It doesn't seem that we'll be witnessing any ectoplasm and maybe it's time to go back to the, uh, the central commentary position, with apologies to Richie Benner. We crossed to, I think it was Mark Smith who was on the air, who did what radio announcers do, time call, weather check, record introduction, commercial break, and the moment, the moment, that our mic was switched off. The moment we crossed back to the studio downstairs, before my eyes, certainly, before Romy's eyes, she corroborated everything I saw. A figure of a woman, opaque, uniform in colour, regardless of whether we were looking at skin or clothing, appeared in the furthest left-hand corner of the room, and moved towards us and across in front of us to the other end of the room. She had on a bonnet, she had on a full skirt, which had a tight bodice and a, I guess what you would call a bustle over the derriere. I don't remember her moving her feet I don't remember her walking per se, I just remember the image, like a, almost like a photographic image of a person who was fluid. I mean, definitely, it was not a static image. She, she sort of turned as she moved across the room, but just for one or two seconds was there before my eyes and then gone. As we shut down and cross back to you, well, I don't know, but uh, Romy, perhaps you could uh, describe what happened for us. Well, I think I said to you, did you see that? And you said, yes, a woman. Was Doug Mulray the only person apart from the medium to see the vision? He may have thought so. Later in the night, when uh, driving back to Gosford, Doug and Romy Warren went into the upstairs room with a microphone and just missed seeing this image. They came back on after a song and described what they've seen, and I thought, whoa, that's exactly what I saw. That's really strange. And she was as 
mysterious as she was real. And I can see her now as I tell you about the experience and have no doubt whatsoever that what I saw was what's popularly referred to as a ghost. I, I still have no idea what it means. There are theories that have been offered, theories I can offer you, but the reality, the single reality that dominates my memory of the experience is this spectre. And it was there and was real and it confounds everything I believe.